this is geometry semester one. This is the first unit called shapes and the fourth lesson in this unit called triangles quadrilaterals practice. It's on creatormath.com under the geometry tab and you might have to type in if you're googling it you might have to type creatormath.weebly.com. The instructions are copy the following problems into your composition book on the correct pages according to the table of contents with the notes for those pages from creatormath.com. And um, before I start, let's just show you the website. So if you're trying to navigate there, Sorry, took me so long. Creatormath.weebly.com, that's where you're going. Here's what the home page looks like. If you're trying to do your composition book, just scroll down on the home page until you see composition book, and then follow those directions, watch those videos, and follow all the information below. There's the turn in dates, but let's go to the geometry tab where all the note notes are, and videos, and problem sets for geometry. Uh, we're going to pass by the PDF for all the vocabulary. That's very important, and there's videos for vocabulary. Let's go straight to the table of contents. This is pages 2 through 6. You're copying this entire table of contents into your composition book on pages 2 through 6. We're going to pass by certain... Well, we are in semester 1 on this one. Let's scroll down to that. And 2 happens to be up top now. 1 may be up top by the time you look. Let's scroll down to the right. Here's shapes we're in, and here's number four. Is that what we're in? Number four. So shapes, four is triangles and quadrilaterals. Here's the pages in your comp book where these notes go. Here are the notes. We're going to click on that and just demonstrate what the notes look like. And if it doesn't update, like my my graphic or my picture did not update. I'm going to go back and reload this. Sometimes I have to load it twice. I've never had to load it more than twice though, knock on wood. There it goes. I saw it sort of flash and update. That means I can zoom in on it now. So it's talking about a right triangle. Right means 90 degrees and one of the angles. Let's see. Um, can a right triangle have more than one 90 degree angle? That's a question in the notes. Uh, equal lateral triangle with all sides equal lengths, an isosceles triangle with two equal sides, a scalene triangle with all sides different lengths, an acute triangle with all angles less than 90 degrees, an obtuse triangle with one angle greater than 90 degrees. Some recitals, no matter what the dimensions of a triangle, the three angles will always add or sum to 180 degrees. Vocabulary, right angle means 90 degrees, equilateral means all side equal, isosceles is two equal sides, triangle is a three-sided, three-angled shape, with an acute triangle being less than all angles less than 90 degrees, up to one greater than 90 what else? A couple problems, it looks like, that you copy into your comp book on the right pages. So follow those notes. That'll help you when you go to do these problem sets. All right, so with that said, let's go on to the problems given here. Given the following triangle, what type of triangle is it? Well, this is the key indicator right here. Once there's a square, right, that's a square in, the, in one of the angles of the triangle, that says that that angle is 90 degrees exactly. That is also called a right triangle. And a right triangle or a 90 degree triangle has exactly one angle equal to 90. These have to be less than 90. Why? Because the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So if you've got 180 total degrees and 90 is being used right here, minus 90, that leaves us with 90 degrees left. If you made this one 90, this one would have to be zero. You can't have zero, it's no longer a triangle. So this one must be a little bit less than 90, and therefore this would be the remaining amount. So you can only have one angle in a triangle equal to 90 degrees. If you had two, it would not be a triangle anymore. So this is a right triangle, one angle, 90 degrees. Given the following triangle, is it acute or obtuse? Is it acute or obtuse? Given the following, is it acute or obtuse? Well, it looks like another 90, doesn't it? Ah, the triangle is neither acute nor obtuse, but it has, but it is a right triangle. All right, that was kind of tricky. 
Um, and my brain was starting to panic a little bit there, going, wait a second, it's got a right angle. That's neither acute nor obtuse. So let's see if they give us an acute or an obtuse triangle. Given the following triangle, what type of triangle is it? So this is a side. Triangles have three sides. This is an angle. Triangles have three angles. This is a tick mark on the angles showing that all three of these angles are equal. These are tick marks on the sides showing that all three of these sides are equal lengths. This is called an equal lateral, which means equal length side triangle. All sides are equal length and therefore all angle measures. Even if you took straws, you know, or popsicle sticks and you went like this and they were all equal length, you would start to see that, wow, those angles have to be all the same measure also. That's an equilateral triangle. Given the following triangle, what type of triangle is it? So I see this angle equal to this one. That's what those tick marks mean. When you have two equal angles, and notice this side length and this side length are equal lengths, two equal side lengths is an isosceles triangle. A hard word to spell and maybe say. It's pronounced isosceles triangle, and it says two sides equal length, and therefore both base angles in equal measure. So this is called the base because it's not two one or one of the equal length sides. And then these are called base angles because they run along the bottom of the triangle here. So in an isosceles triangle with two equal length sides, the base angles which are attached to those two equal length sides are also equal. Given the following triangle, is it acute or obtuse? Okay, well, let's think about this. If this is equal to this, to this, there's three angles. 3x equals a total of 180. Why? Rule. Always, 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 always. Never changes and will never change. And I always thought, you know, we grew up in a, I was, as a student, I would always be, this is a random universe, right? And then I got to geometry and I was like, how can all triangles add up to 180? That does not seem very random anymore. So an interesting thing for your brain to conceive is, why is it if you look at a tree, every bit of bark is different, right? Every every eye retina, every fingerprint, all these things are all unique. How in the world is it that no matter what shape you draw this triangle, like this, or like this, or like this, always the three angles add up to 180? Always. Why? Well, I don't know. You tell me. But uh, the triangle has a very consistent pattern. All three angles must sum or add to 180. If there's three and they're all equal, then I divide both sides by three. This is three over three is one x equals 180 divided by 3, which is 60 degrees. So because our angle is, all the angles are 60 degrees, so that makes this 60, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and I can kind of just look at the triangle and go, they're all less than 90, right? That's what acute means. It means all the angles, the largest angle is less than 90 degrees. Mm, the largest angle is less than 90 degrees. Okay, the largest angle is less than 90. Fine, okay. Kind of a weird way to say it, but that is true. It means that all angles are less than 90 degrees. That might be a better way, I think. All right. So given the following triangle, is it acute or obtuse? So obtuse means that there is one angle greater than 90 degrees. I can tell right away this angle is greater than 90 degrees. And why? Because a 90 would be more like this, right? That's what a 90 degree angle is. So this one is wider. See how it's stretched out even further here? This angle is wider. So um, this angle is greater than, so greater than 90 degrees is this angle, so that's an obtuse triangle. The largest angle is greater than 90 degrees, check. Given the following triangle, what type of triangle is it? Well, it has a side length here with one tick mark, a side length here with two tick marks, a side length here with three tick marks. That means that this side is a different length than this side and is a different length than this side. This is all three sides a different length. And therefore, all the angles have to be different measure also, by the way. So this is called a scalene triangle. All three sides are different lengths. Does the following triangle, like given the following triangle, what does the sum of angle A, angle B, and C have to be? Oh, so 
they're telling us this here. What does this mean now? You should know by now. This means 90 degrees. So now they're asking, what does angle B plus angle C equal? What? So if the sum is 180 and one of them's 90, that leaves you with 90 left for the other two. So a, angle B plus angle C must be 90 degrees here. All right? The two of them together must add up to 90 because the total must be 180 degrees. And I didn't put my degrees on, but it'll be like that. So relatively simple questions, but at the same time, if you don't know them, you don't know them. So go back and learn them. Given the following triangle, what is the measure of angle C? Well, this is what we did already. It's telling us all three sides are equal. This is an equilateral triangle. All these are equal measures. They're telling us with one tick mark on each. So this is the 3x equals 180. Divide by 3, divide by 3, cancel. x equals 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. We already calculated that, but let's just go through it again. Given the following triangle, if angle A is 42 degrees, so they're saying this right here is 42 degrees, then what is the measure of angle C? Well, they said one tick mark, one tick mark. Those are equal. So if they tell me this is 42, this one's 42 degrees. And this, since it has two equal base angles, this becomes an isosceles triangle. All right? And I hope you're noticing my notation. You know, we talked earlier about this can be called angle C. Notice the angle shape. We use triangle to represent things. This would be called, um, this triangle would be called triangle A, B, C. Just starting to notice that notation so that in geometry it doesn't catch you off guard. If this is 42, this one is also 42 for this triangle because they told us with this tick mark that these were um, equal base angles. And just by definition, if we knew this side length was equal to this side length, which they tell us with these tick marks, we would also know that those are equal even if they didn't give us the tick marks on the angles because that's the definition also of an isosceles triangle is the base angles are equal by definition. So make sure you're matching up the right um, assignment name for this. This is Geometry Semester 1. This is Unit 1, Shapes. And this is the fourth lesson, Triangles, Quadrilaterals, Practice on CreatorMath.com under the Geometry tab. Hope this helps.